This is Yarbo, the world's first autonomous snowblower and multi-purpose intelligent yard robot. Now when you receive your Yarbo, make sure to have lots of room because it's big and it comes in four boxes. The next box is the snowblower module itself, which is not light. So unlike me, if you have someone else to give you a hand, I strongly recommend that you do. They've labeled everything so well, not just on the machine itself, but also on the tools making it a cinch to actually set up. This is like your own home battle bot. And when you have that snowblower attachment, this Yarbo S1 comes in at over 150 pounds, so it's no lightweight. By the way, if you have any doubt or questions along the way, which I did, they have a ton of videos that are really, really well done, and I found myself watching quite a few of them. Hit that power button to fire it up, and it comes alive. At this time, even without GPS, you can manually control it Ooh. with the included controller and take it for a spin. Remember, read the manual. Next step is to set up your RTK antenna. You'll need a clear view of the sky and may even have to mount it on your house. Open up the Yarbo app, scan the QR code, and follow the setup steps. After setup is completed, you start mapping your route by just walking alongside and driving the actual rover itself. Mapping involves creating a starting point and a path, and then you just drive the S1 around the perimeter you want to clear. Afterwards, you can set your parameters like what side you want the snow to be thrown, how far and how powerful you want the unit to operate. Since I was in a real rush to set this up because the forecast was calling for snow the very next day, I didn't set up the docking station but will at a later date. Now Yarbo isn't just stopping here. I had a chance to visit the booth in Las Vegas at CES this year and got to see firsthand what they're up to. The beauty of Yarbo is that it's designed to be expandable with a mower and blower attachment coming very soon. You also have a fertilizer, a seed spreader, a liquid spreader, I was able to even take a look at their vision module so it allows the Yarbo to actually follow you. So you wanna add a trailer to it to help you move around a whole bunch of heavy, heavy rocks or stones, it'll do it. I don't have the exact specs or torque, but with those rubber wheels, it's low center of gravity, it's weight and power, they have a video of it pulling a Tesla. All right, you might be able to hear in the background, Yarbo is working. We have finally gotten a decent snowfall. It's still snowing, as you can see right now. And looking at our tape measure earlier, it was about six inches deep, and it's probably one or two inches more right now. Uh, so anyways, we connected her up uh, and sent her on my first plan or map, which is the driveway. So far, it's been really, really impressive. I think I need to fine tune some things like where the snow is being thrown because when it got close to the garage, it, I had my garage door open and it, it just sprayed the garage. So on that portion there, I can actually fine tune it and just say, hey, put it over to that area. And I didn't do that. So I will do that next time when it's finished its program. You can see the driveway here. This is exactly how I mapped it out. So. If it looks a little bit messy, I could have made it overlap a little bit more and it would have been a little bit cleaner, but it is snowing pretty heavy right now. And you can see it, it's pretty clean. And it's quite a bit of snow. Yarbo did everything. I did not intervene at all. Of course it detects um, people and pets. That's really easy. You can't come within like 16 feet of this thing. Oh, it sees me. I've noticed like we have little lips from the concrete onto the driveway and things and some of our paving stones and it's smart enough to actually, it, it, it'll sense it and it'll lift up just a bit. It'll try again and then until it can pass and then it goes back down. So it is smart in that regard as well. So we're on just a single charge and we'll, let's see if it can actually do everything on the one charge. There he is. 
working on the sidewalk, which I have actually entranceways to the road and interesting to see where, I only have it mapped up to, let's just take a walk up here. It's done this one path so far up here. All the way to here. I should have mapped it farther, but anyways, because we have all that sidewalk up there, which we will tackle in a bit, but let's have a look. So far, so good. Okay, you see the cameras here. You notice that it says take off the sticker. I took that means around the camera, by the way. You notice that the camera is clear and the sensors because it's actually heated. This side as well. Even when it gets a lot of snow on it, it stays nice and clear. Okay, the snow is still coming down a lot. So Yarbo did the driveway, it did the sidewalk, our two maps that we uh, did for it, and it still had over 40% battery left. So I just made it do the driveway again. And you know, it, it's, it's really, really clean. I think I did a little, it, it overlapped a little bit better. It wasn't as deep this time, uh, but yeah, it only took 22 minutes and then it just returns right back to the starting point or the dock if you have the dock. And this is why these robot are really really good whether it's for snow blowing or mowing your lawn uh, because it doesn't have to be you know if it's like you, it's not made for three feet of snow um, but it's made for guess what before it gets to three feet just send it out and just let it keep on doing its thing because when it runs out of battery when it gets low it'll just come back and charge by itself and then you can set it back out you can put it on a program you can do whatever you want and yeah i'm gonna you know it still has power but i'm gonna charge it up and I'm going to send it back out, um, you know, in a couple hours when the snow accumulates more and that's it. I'm going to go and do my thing inside and stay warm. So. All right, you got to admit, that was kind of like throwing a baby into the deep end. That was a good test for the very first time using Yarbo for a newbie like me. And you know, I did notice a few things. I took a lot of notes. There will be some tweaking involved for the next snowfall for sure. So what did I note? Well, first thing, I should have increased the power. I mentioned that already. So if you have, you know, six to eight or 10 inches of snow, don't go on low mode. Uh, and next thing, even though this is autonomous, in an ideal world, it's going to finish off what it's doing. When it needs power, it's going to dock itself and then you can actually send it out however you want. Uh, but in the real world, conditions change. Sun comes out, it might melt, it could get colder. And you know, in the chute here, you could have snow that accumulates and freezes and turns into ice. Uh, so once in a while, you're gonna have to go out and look. And if there is snow blocking this area, uh, take that shovel and chisel that out. Uh, or else you're going to reduce the size of your intake. So it's just not gonna give you as clean of a job. And Yarbo does a great job of adjusting the height here uh, when it reaches obstacles. However, if you have an incline like I do, and it's fairly steep, um, on the first run, it had no problem, but then it actually froze up. It got really icy and Yarbo did have some instances where it was spinning. It still got up, but it wasn't as effective. Well, there is a solution and because they include studs for the tracks and I was too rushed to put them on. I wanted to see how it handled without them, but if you are in an incline, I would actually put them on. Also, if you have to move your antenna, which I did on a couple times because I wanted to get the strongest signal before I mounted it, you're going to have to reset and remap, even though if you mapped already, because everything, corresponds to the location of that antenna. So even if you moved it a few inches away, it's going to affect the accuracy of Yarbo because that is your constant. Also, speaking of remapping, I'm going to remap because I found uh, by including those entrance ways to the road, Yarbo did manage it and navigated it, but it's a complex kind of area there. It's like a U shape. And so it actually has to do a lot of, the algorithm is actually constantly changing the angle of the shoot. And it just took 
a lot longer than actually if it was just to go straight up and do all the sidewalk. Uh, so I would say keep your maps simpler if possible. Uh, so next time I'm going to just eliminate just those entrance ways right there. I can just shovel those by hand or just do them after if I have power left, but it'll allow you to have more energy and more power to actually do more of the sidewalk that you have there. So is there a Yarbo in your future? Well, it all depends on your needs. If you have, let's say, a large property with a big long driveway that needs a lot of snow cleared off it often, then a Yarbo is good for you. If you have a large yard that needs constant attention, a lot of mowing, and you want to do it autonomously, just send this thing out every day, Yarbo's for you. If you are not into high tech stuff, then Yarbo's probably not for you at all and you might want to just hire a landscaper in that regard. Just remember when you're an early adopter of innovative technology like this, there may be bumps along the way, but Yarbo's been pretty good to actually smooth out the path. Uh, they got a great team, a lot of people working on the technology of this unit here and the future versions to come. So I, I would actually have a lot of confidence in them. They've been doing it for a long time and working on this. Uh, so um, yeah. I do have a couple problems with the Yarbo. And number one, you need snow right now. And there is no snow in the foreseeable future, which kind of makes me sad. And number two, this is actually kind of funny, is that these autonomous machines are supposed to give you more time, take over all the heavy lifting so you can do what you want. However, whenever I use technology like this, I just can't help but be mesmerized watching it. So even though I could be warm inside watching a movie or something, I find myself always want to come out here and watch Yarbo because yeah, it's pretty amazing. So anyways, if you want any more information on Yarbo, I'll leave a link in the video description. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Ciao.